I've been working for the past almost three weeks on this project of adding additional equipment to my basement workshop. I didn't even used to call it a workshop, but now I think it may qualify borderline as such. I embarked on the project emanating out of a broken Santa Fe classic dehumidifier. I broke it down and found a decent motor with a blower and blower motor on it, as you can see in the foreground. So I went to my local Home Depot, Lowe's, and bought that shop vac filter. And my idea was to use it as a dust filter. But as it turns out, it was far too weak to generate any kind of dust collection out of it. The CFMs out of it was pitiful. So I went out, I also saw a deal for 30 gallon bins like this for for um, twenty dollars each, I got two of them for forty dollars. So I will be building dust collector modification using Super Dust Deputy from Oneida. This is a uh, the one hundred ninety dollar version, one hundred seventy nine dollar, one hundred ninety something with tax. The top of this using this gasket and these hardware. Decide whether. Uh, I should screw it to this or not. Put it on top of it. Just need to know that for the height. So this will be the intake. I'm going to eventually need to go to Lowe's to get connector adapters so that this thing fits onto this inlet. So I believe it's five inch hosing tubing that I need to get that. The rest of this will be under time lapse. So as you can see, uh, the 30 gallon dust bin led to me buying uh, an, an Ida Super Dust Deputy that was like almost $200. And as you can see, I bought a Harbor Freight Central Machinery 3 horsepower uh, dust collector, mainly just utilizing the blower motor on it as well as the tine separator unit off of it. And so. I was hoping that that 30 gallon bin would come with a steel lock top, but it was just a plastic lock top. The steel lock tops are actually quite pricey. For, for the 30 gallon ones, you can find them at various locales in local regions for as cheap as like $16. But if you wanted to buy them at a major company shipping nationwide, they're more in the neighborhood of 50 to $60 and so it's way too expensive to buy to add to the $20 bin that I I bought the bins were very clean because the guy I bought it from he was using them for salt or he had bought salt uh, housed in those bins and so once I got the dust deputy installed using the included uh, gaskets it seemed to be fairly airtight. That was the one savings in this project. The rest of it, not huge savings. The Harbor Freight Dust Collector 3 horsepower is a good deal when it's on sale, which is the way I got it. $200. So $214 after taxes. And so the question was mounting it on my studs, my wooden studs, which is what I did. I added the bracket to it, which I had used on my previous um, part out build from, from the Santa Fe blower. Fortunately, it fit on this motor as well. So using that and a piece of three by uh, or three quarter inch plywood, I could mount it pretty securely on my wall. It was just a matter of fitting it onto the super dust de deputy and the 30 gallon bin with enough space so that I can roll it out when I need to empty the bin. Now the tine separator will collect very little dust and so we're using this gamma lid which I can construction adhesive glue onto the base of it. I can just use a small bucket although I used the Lowe's um, 5 gallon bucket because it fits the gamma lid. 
to collect whatever minimal residue will remain after going through the super dust deputy. Really, you can just use the smallest of buckets to collect whatever, even over many months, I believe. So what I found is that these fittings seems to fit this type of things through that sewer pipe, a four inch sewer pipe. And so I got 20 feet of sewer pipe. The sewer pipe is much cheaper. Mount underneath that thing. So you gotta mount the thing in. So let's mount it in like this. This is what will go underneath. So this thing is the siphon that I need to fit here. And this is where the giant 19 inch filter will fit. So the other big expense to this is the Donaldson type 19 inch width filter. You can use a skinnier filter but you're losing out on the surface area to generate. I'm going to tape these seams to minimize air leak. Very solid, taped up to prevent as much air leak as possible. And that is in there solid. So there's a tremendous suck there. Working on this jiggering to come up with a better idea for a solid bracket. I did everything I could to try to mount on that stud. The seal for the gamma lid. There's the thine separator, more or less completed, except for the piping. The piping, here are the y, y joints and the 45 degree turns. There's the splitter, 4 inch sewer piping. I'm going to do a Y. Y split right here. One will Y split again. Feed here, feed here. This one will I'll need to make a turn maybe this way. And then go this direction. The y here. Here's the coupling. Two in, four inch to two inch coupling. And 20 feet of hosing and maybe 20 feet of hosing and that will be my sweep. That's the plan so far. I'm beginning to do piping. Two to four up to here and so this is going to be a straight shot the goal of ending here it's a good fit waiting for the four to two reducer here as well so that's the progress i'm making yeah so the piping ended up costing me way more than the actual dust collector but dust collector is the heart of the workshop because the equipment that you use for woodworking generates so much dust so much sawdust. I already had the miter saw and the router, router table and the table saw. But um, when, I, when I used a uh, particle uh, monitor, particle meter, I was seeing incredible. Waiting for the fittings to come in. I need a four to two and a half reducer, four to two and a half reducer, two jack hose attachment. It's a four inch reduction this one is complete so maybe i should put a blast gate like right here maybe blast gate here maybe a blast gate right there five gallon balloon filter which will eventually be replaced by a donaldson type 19 inch diameter filter but the air seems to be tight as it is just blast gate at the router table closed. Last gate at the miter is open because otherwise the sewer hosing works adequately for this four inch system. Yeah, I was seeing uh, uh, for particulate matter 0.3 microns or so I was seeing 10, 14,000 uh, particulate numbers which is quite unhealthy. I've been living in that kind of situation for over 20 years.
but uh, I only noticed it at my age when I was wheezing, when previously I wasn't. And so that is what prompted me to get this dust collector. The dust collection engine motor, tine separator, super dust deputy, and the Donaldson filter is only like 600 and so dollars if you use the Harbor Freight engine. But it's the piping that costs you the money. The piping is, you know, six, eight hundred, depending on how much piping you need, depending on how much equipment you, you have. <clears throat> I'm not done with my piping because I may eventually need the tools. That's my uh, hand tool rack that I, for easy grabbing. A lot of the hardware is four or five boxes. I've relocated to this $15 Harbor Freight bin for ease of access, rapid access, and a centralized location. I've installed this $15 Harbor Freight uh, four foot extension bar. Branching off of this is this to turn off the fan and overhead lights. Looping to the other side on a separate, I think it's a 30 amp line, is this vacuum switch. When I switch it to automatic, whenever I turn on the router, miter saw, it will switch on the vacuum within about five seconds and when I turn this off within about five seconds the vacuum then turns off. I was wondering if I forked off of these two and split them into two lines if all the switches into those lines then would work. I'm not sure about that. The core of this is the Harbor Freight engine. Two horsepower specified as uh, 1500 CFM. It'd be great if the fittings here were four inches and then I can get all the CFM as it stands, it seems to suck up the dust fairly decently. So this entire setup <coughs> so far has cost a lot of money, thousands. That Harbor Freight 2 horsepower dust collector was only $214 after taxes, basically $199 pre-tax on sale. That has this dust bag on it, which is 5 micron and inadequate. I, I have purchased a Donaldson type 19 inch Merv type filter, which is to come this week. It has a rubber gasket, I think. I'm hoping that it will fit on there and when I tap screw it in to these sides or maybe underneath sides along with these turnbuckles, this thing is working out pretty well. It seems pretty solid with the construction adhesive. This is sealed, I think, with the same adhesive, kind of rubbery, fairly secure. The mounts on it, I think, are more than adequate. It's mounted on this large piece of plywood, which is secured in over nine screws onto three different studs and then sitting on this securely as well sitting on this buttress here and it's holding an adequate weight this is adequate to hold this up by far uh, but it allows me to lash these as it turns out accumulatively heavy four inch pvc, PVC sewer piping to it at multiple one two three four five six places so it's pretty secure now i lashed it here because i prefer not to have to drill into the cement so all the equipment thus far is dust collected to some degree. Just the forward spray, uh, I don't know what I can do about that, but just maybe put that in front of it. This thing was very expensive. It's PowerTech floor sweep, which comes with the handles and with this clip and the end attachment. It was in the neighborhood of like $60 or something. That hosing was like $43. That's 20 feet of four inch hosing. All the sewer piping cost a lot of money, like in the neighborhood of like $600 or so. The total cost of the setup as seen here has thus far been in the neighborhood of $1,300. The dust collection engine, the cyclonic separator, and the Donaldson filter was about $603 of that. The remainder of it being hosing and attachments and accessories and little things like this switch, this is like $40 switch. Yeah, so the cost was more than I was hoping it would be. And it just kept on expanding. Once you have the dust collection, you want more equipment because you are able to operate more equipment without soiling the environment. Because prior to that, I had to open up the back door and use one of those giant fans to blow the particulates out outside, which I'll still have to do occasionally. But now I can stay indoors and spray a lot more dust. So here is the first item I bought uh, in conjunction with the dust collection, which is the bandsaw. Which, which is, which allows me to do fine work, a very versatile machine, which I will use a lot, I think. It comes with a good four inch port there, but the actual hole is two and a half inch, I think. So I had to improvise a piece of tubing underneath the mechanism uh, as an accessory port. And you'll see that later that 
evacuated 80-85% of the fine dust that squirts out from the sawing that one does. This one uh, is this what a 10 inch bandsaw was fairly inexpensive. I'm trying to remember how much it was. $250 or something like that. And it comes with that stand. So you, you have everything you need. I also bought a small 3 16th uh, thin bandsaw for fine work, 72 inch uh, designed for this machine. So I can use that if I need to do tight circles, tight circle cuts. But other than that, I think this is the most bandsaw that I should need uh, in my lifetime. I am not a craftsman. I have no craftsmanship skills. I just intend to build practical objects such as stands and benches and things like that, stuff that you see there. I am probably average or below average in craftsmanship skills. I'm probably average in almost every skill that you can imagine really, just an average guy. I have no artistic skills, I have no craftsmanship skills. I learned that early when I was nine years old in the Cub Scout, Weeblows, Boy Scout, doing Pinewood Derby. My car was the ugliest car in the Derby, always. Of course, I never got any help from my dad, who was always too busy. But ever since then, I tried making many things, and I have made many things, but uh, always a hack job, never anything of any kind of quality. So I hope to be able to build at least a slight step up in quality items over what I have been able to do in the past. But I think this workshop is just a hacker's workshop workshop for just everyday minor things, not for fine furniture building. I remember when I was nine years old, there was a guy in my neighborhood named Mike Zimmerman who could always build these craftsmanship full of craftsmanship uh, model, model trains, cars, spaceships, anything. The bandsaw hooked up adequately and securely. It has a minimal run of the flex tube, but enough to allow me to move the table out for larger pieces of lumber. Spindle sander has too long a flex tube section. It goes all the way around. Two more Ys, and I'm picturing Ying off right here. And then having this uh, blast gate dedicated to this one, either relocated here, or I could just keep it here, but make sure that the Y Y's off before the blast gate. And then put another uh, blast gate here. And that one, I'm gonna come out like this. I'll need to curve out like that, just like that, but extend it a little bit more. 45 degree elbow, 45 degree elbow to make the right hand turn probably downwards. Just hook up this minimal, maybe a six foot section of this flex hosing attached in this way. Anyway, back to that Mike Zimmerman. In comparison, whenever I made models, and I made lots of them, they were all utter garbage. Shameful productions. You know, Revel cars. Uh, what is that? Uh, Tajima, the Japanese model stuff. Anyway, I didn't have the equipment to do a good job either, but generally I didn't have the patience, and I don't have that craftsmanship mentality. To, uh, to do a good job at anything like that. So that's why I never went into that type of career. But now in my old age, I'm kind of more interested in giving it a second try. But I'm sure I won't, I won't do a good job at it. But this minimal modicum of equipment. I had to do a lot of mint labor to split that and extend this out to about here, connect the minimal, maybe six foot, seven foot of hosing to that, using this pipe right here. And the turnbuckles, I can only manage to put in four. So as you can see, I'm already making good use of the floor sweep and the hand sweeper. I measured with an uh, anemometer, anemometer that I have, it's 4,000 feet per minute, which equates to something in the neighborhood of 350 CFMs for the 4-inch tubing. 
which is slightly disappointing, but adequate, I think. It does a good job sweeping up the dust. Okay, I will install this dust driver mouth craft into this Bosch RA1181 and this. So this thing came with a adhesive Velcro that mounts underneath that red ring. Velcro onto that undersurface. But that red rubber thing hose might get touched up a bit by, by the router bit. I'm not sure about that. But I split here. So I've got this main intake. That intake right there sucking. These hosing screws into the fittings nicely. And then that kind of plugs into this kind of rubbery red red thing. I'm not sure how uh, sturdy that is, but generally it seems to do what it's supposed to do because when I did that and there was very minimal forward spill, if at all. I mean, they, yeah, very minimal downward spill. If Duct taped around here because these keep filling apart. Make sure the blast cables can clear here and here. I installed this little bracket there to hang the floor sweeper there and then the old uh, hold I can put the handheld one right there. This thing is a bit more than a bit too flimsy to hold the weight of that. I'm going to slip in between. I had to drive all the way down to Sanford to buy the Bauer 12 inch drill press that I was pining for for some time but it was on sale in late April for 250 bucks so I snapped it up drove all the way down to Sanford to get it fortunately they still had one have they still had one I also bought this universal tool stand to go with it to mount on top of it it's quite pricey at like 45 dollars 42 plus tax but I got it it's a little bit flimsy you need a solid piece of plywood on top and maybe one in the middle I have seen people mount 2x4s underneath it at the feet to really stabilize it. But for my purposes, really one top plywood is, piece is all I needed. And it, it's good enough. So there I'm hacking the plywood, plywood piece on top of it, trying to center it the best I can. contouring the edges so I don't get splinters and I'm just hacking it onto the tools tool stand that was good enough so I proceed to mount the base of the drill press. I've been pining for a drill press for some time, but now with the dust collection, there was nothing holding me back, and especially as it, this one was on sale, the 12 inch one. And I definitely didn't need any more drill press than this. As I will not be ever doing any kind of super heavy duty work on it. So makeshift dust collection with zip ties right here.
so that it doesn't have much of a pull to mount it on. I ended up getting a sucker sweeper for the floor. working on the shroud for the spider saw. Collect and funnel most of the dust into this intake rubber sheathing around the router for dust collection. Donaldson tore it that 19 inch filter. So I've made to create a little um, rubber hosing dust trap hooked up to the accessory port, a little breather at, on the left. I'm gonna try to cut a slice of this using this fence. No idea if this is gonna work. I'm gonna hope for the best. Here it goes. didn't interfere with the mechanism so I think that's gonna work for dust collection on this bandsaw. A good cut on this so I think that's a success. That's what the little duct tape Pretty well. Is the bandsaw or the most like the miter saw? The way to do it is just to uh, do that and just lose a little piece in order to make it more accurate on the bandsaw. That's gonna have to do it.
this will have to do. So what I'm trying to prevent is having to use this uh, painful key to on this thing, it comes with this tap out. There it goes. It came out arbor and all. See if it's the same arbor. Maybe I'll just be on the safe side. Use the arbor that came with it. Cleanse this arbor that came with this keyless chuck. At least it'll prevent fingerprints, right? So now. So that seated pretty well. Lock. Pound it in. Keyless chuck. Going in. I believe that's secure. So I believe that was successful. So that's the keyless chuck installation. Overall, the dust collection is going good. The table saw I haven't used, but I'm waiting for the dust hood for that from California.